Hi everybody, this is part two of my Backbone JS video tutorial series. This time we'll be talking about views. If you want to see the part one, which is talking about models, there's a link in the description below the video. Uh, for setup, we'll do the same thing that we did in the models by adding underscore and Backbone, but we'll also be adding jQuery because Backbone needs jQuery or some other DOM manipulation library to do the DOM manipulation. Uh, I also pre-made a little bit of HTML. I have a container here for adding stuff to and there's a little template for adding into the container. Um, also created a little model already just uh, generic for some data to use to but with the view to add stuff to the container. So we'll get started with a view. Same thing as with models, we just go backbone. This time we'll do view. And once again, extend. Alright, in here we'll do the same thing as with the model. We'll use initialize, which creates our constructor. Uh, right now we'll just do a little console.log initializing. And we'll go ahead and create our view equals new view. Save that. And yep, see there it is initializing. All right, so the next thing we need to talk about options that you can send in here. Um, there are a few special built-in options that you can put in here that will be directly accessible by this dot whatever option you had. Uh, otherwise, if it's not a special pre-made one, you can do this dot options dot whatever you set the name of the property down here to. So we'll create an option here. We'll call it blank option. And it'll just be empty straight. So now we will actually do blank option, but we'll take this and throw it into the console.log. And reload it, and it says empty string. Now how about some of those pre-built or special options in here, huh? Well, the one of the big ones is L. Uh, this is where you can tell it the DOM element that you want to represent the view. So if you want it to use a pre-existing element, which we do, which is our container, then we'll use L. Um, you can supply it just a string that has uh, selector you want to use or you can use jQuery object or we can use a, a direct DOM object so like get direct by ID container so something like that any one of those things would work you can just send it into L and that will become our element. Now if you actually want to create a new DOM element that isn't already included in the HTML, you can use a few things like tag name, class name, ID, and attributes. Uh, I'm sure you can figure out what each one of these things means. So if you supply these things or any one of one or all or whatever of these things, uh, the view 
constructor will automatically create an element based on this data that you sent it. Um, for this one, we'll be using the container, but instead of sending it in, we'll just create it here because it won't be changing. Um, the view will only use the container, it won't be using something else. Um, now, uh, this, now you can use this.l to refer to that DOM element. Now, though, if you want to refer to a jQuery object, you can just do $l. That way you don't have to do, or create your own jQuery element like, or object like this. It's nice shorthand, it's cached and everything for you. So next thing is a model. Um, we want this model to be used by the view. So we'll do model and we'll just set it to this model. Um, this is another one of the special ones so you can just directly access it by this dot model. Um, yeah. Next thing is events. Events are, this is really cool. So we just do the event name, and then after that we'll do the name of a method. So we can just create a method on here, and if it matches the string name put in here, it will call this method. Um, render is a normal method that we use with uh, Backbone. It's actually the standard method. Normally, it, it's already built in and everything, but it does nothing. So you actually have to override it for it to actually accomplish anything. Now, one thing to note about events is it is contextual. Um, so if you say click, it's going to say click on the container. If you do click and you can add a selector here, we'll do button. This button is within the context of the container. So it's a child element of the container. Um, so when you click on this button, it'll call render. If you click on any other button on the page, it won't do anything. So, well, that's how we want it. Um, we're going to go ahead and create a variable for our temp to hold our template information. So we'll do this dot template equals number of list template, and we actually want the tr children of it or the li. We don't really want the template element itself. Um, so now how about we go in here and use render. So first we're going to get our data from the model. So this.model.get data. So I'll just pull this bit right here straight out of the model. And then what we're going to do is we're going to clone this li element over and over again and then append it into this list. Um, we're going to fill the ref and the text for the link using these bits here. So what we'll do is we'll just set up a normal for loop where i equals 0, l equals data dot length. I plus L, I plus plus, standard for loop. Uh, next bit, we'll put it into a variable. The li will equal this dot template, and we'll clone it. And then we'll get into the A element to manipulate that. Uh, we'll change the 
pref into data i dot ref and then we'll also change the text within it into data i dot text and then we'll have to do an end so that we get back to the li element instead of just having the a element be assigned to this li. Then we need to do this dot dollar l dot we'll do dot find and we'll just do our ul element. I could do number list but there's one element in there so it's not a big deal. And then we'll just append the li onto the list. So now we should be able to click on the button and run render. So let's see what we get. Dink. Right there. It worked. Hooray Google. So that's pretty much all I got to show you about uh, backbone views. If you want to do a different templating method other than what I did here, uh, there's much nicer ways. Uh, underscore itself actually has a templating library built in which you can access the documentation uh, on the documentation site. Uh, I included a link in the description below the video for that as well. Um, so yeah, that's all there is to it. Happy coding, guys.